Okay, I'm here with Tom Brown, certified lube specialist, Amsoil representative, uh, and he also sells the Polaris uh, test kits. Tom is going to lead us through the reports. As you get your report back from Polaris, what to expect, what a normal report looks like, what a report looks like with Arch Oil, AR9100 in it, and what a report looks like that, that is a big mess. That actually came out of my truck at 15,000 miles because I was trying to stretch the oil to see what would happen. But this is what you should expect. Uh, and I'm going to hand the floor over to you, Tom. All right. Thanks, Bill. Um, when you get your email, or and you'll also get a report back in the snail mail as well, uh, this is a standard report format for Polaris Labs. So starting at the top left, let's orient you to the form. Uh, here's your account information. This is about you. Moving to the right, this is about the component. And I say component and not vehicle because a lot of people use oil analysis to test multiple components on one piece of equipment. Here's about the sample that you submitted. There's a tracking number on the outside of the bottle and on the printed sheet that you uh, received with the kit. Uh, the lab number is if you ever want to call them back and talk to them about your sample, uh, they're going to ask you for the lab number. It's going to tell you where they processed it. They've got several labs across the country. Uh, the initials of the analyst. All right, here's the day you told them that you pulled the sample. Here's the day they received it. And here's the day that they completed their analysis of your report. Over here, this is information that you told Polaris. You should tell them what type of filter that you're using and the micron rating, if you know that. Uh, the micron rating is usually available from the filter manufacturer's website. A typical micron rating for a full flow filter on one of our diesel trucks now is around 20. And then over here is you're telling them what is the thing that they are analyzing. And in this case, they're analyzing Shell Rotella T 1540 diesel engine oil. And so then down here is where the lab tech is going to provide you some very valuable words uh, in relation to all these numbers down here that I'm going to walk through in a minute. Uh, and in this case, he says, hey, uh, continue to observe the trend and monitor equipment for fluid conditions. Back up here for a second. Uh, at the very top, this report got flagged with a uh, condition level one, which is still in the normal range. Zero is there's absolutely nothing wrong with your oil. One means, ah, there's a slight issue, but it's not anything to worry about yet. It's still green. Viscosity is slightly low, he says. Please, for, oh, in this case, you did not tell them what the application was uh, on this report, so they're asking you for that. The more information you give them, uh, the better they can help you. Now, getting down in here into the actual numbers portion of this report, uh, here's the wear metals. This, these are the pieces of metal that would have been generated by your engine that are, have been found in the oil. Um, and you've got iron, chromium, nickel, aluminum, copper, lead, tin, and cadmium, silver, and uh, vanadium. And if you uh, are looking at this report online, you should be able to click on each of those uh, headers, and it'll take you to a description of how, what is it, how they measure it, and where did it probably come from. Uh, and so here, you don't see any color flagging on the wear metals. That means there's nothing wrong, nothing unusual. Uh, you can have small numbers in any of these uh, and it not be, not throw a flag. One of the things I want to point out here as you read this report is that we're talking six parts per million. Right. PPM. Two parts per million. One part per million. I mean, this is an astonishingly precise and accurate uh, measuring system that Polaris has in place. All right, so the next area that we want to look at here on the report is contaminant metals. Silicon, sodium, and potassium. Silicon is typically when you've got a bad air filter or you've got a leak in your air induction system somewhere and you're pulling dirt in. Sodium and potassium sometimes can come in, potassium especially from antifreeze. Uh, additive metals, you know, when you buy a quart or a gallon of oil, 80% is base oil, 20% is additives. And so what we're looking at over here is they are measuring how much of your additives are still remaining in your oil. That can be very uh, important if you have an oil that starts to lose a particular additive, uh, it can tell you that you've got a problem going on inside your engine or you have a problem with the oil that you're using. 
uh, this is sample information. Some of this is a repeat of what we had up here, but the date that you, and this is as something that you're gonna fill in, is what day did you pull the sample, what day did the laboratory receive it, and here's very important, lube time. This is where you have to calculate or estimate how much time was on your oil when you pulled that sample uh, since the last time you changed it. The unit time is how many miles or hours are on the component. So in this case, we're talking about a diesel engine and we typically measure uh, diesel engines in vehicles on miles, but I can also make a case why it's better to do it by hours. Uh, but the default is miles on a vehicle. Lube change is, did you change the lube since the last time you reported it? Um, and also here, lube added. So since the last time you pulled it, if, if this is your first report, um, it'll default to zero. But if you're doing extended drain intervals and you're doing and building a profile on and using oil analysis to track that, then they need to know if you've added oil since the last time you submitted a sample. They also want to know if you have changed your filter. Now we're going to get into some other contaminants. Uh, and this is common, uh, Bill and I were talking earlier, 6.4 engines, just because of the way the emission system was designed on them, they had a real bad problem with fuel dilution because they would dump fuel into uh, cylinder seven and eight in order to regenerate the DPF. Well, a lot of that fuel was ending up down in the engine oil. Uh, but so it's going to tell you here if you have fuel in your oil. You do not want fuel in your oil because diesel fuel is not a good lubricant and it does it destroys engine oil. Uh, it It'll costs, make those soft metals <laughs> yep. it, it give away to the hard metals and end up in your and end up in this sample here because it causes the viscosity to skyrocket downward uh, and it really messes with your oil. Uh, soot uh, here we're talking about every time you burn diesel fuel inside your engine, one of the byproducts of that is soot. That's why the new trucks have a diesel particulate filter on them that catches the vast majority of this soot before it gets kicked out the tailpipe. That's why our new trucks don't really smoke anymore. So we want to measure that uh, because if too much soot gets down in the oil, it can cause soot thickening, which is when your oil gets too thick uh, and it can't flow through the engine correctly and it can't lubricate. So, and then the third one over here is water. A, a internal combustion engine is largely an air pump, but it, because of that, it's also a water pump. Uh, every uh, cubic foot of air that your engine pulls in contains a large amount of water because of humidity. And on a humid day, it's more, and on a dry day, it's less, but you're always pulling a huge amount of water through your engine. Most of it goes right on through, goes out the tailpipe, gets vaporized, but some of that water can get down into your engine oil. And you think, okay, what's the problem with that? Well, water, it can activate other chemicals that then turn into an acid. It's H2SO4, hydro yep. uh, sulfuric acid, correct? Yep, that, that sulfuric acid is sitting down there in your oil, and until it encounters water, it's not doing anything. But as soon as it encounters water, they bond and form an acid. It's acid rain, basically, because yep. because H2SO4 is, is hydrocarbons bonding with water makes sulfuric acid, and enough water gets in there, and it will literally make acid rain inside your engine. And that's not good. Please. It's funny. I actually, I've actually seen a motor come apart that was black inside. Yep. It blackened everything in there because of the acid. So now this report uh, did not measure the viscosity at 40 degrees Celsius. But, but it did measure the viscosity at 100 degrees Celsius. And 100 degrees Celsius is basically 212 degrees Fahrenheit. That is considered normal operating temperature for an internal combustion engine. And so the one flag that we got on this report was that the uh, viscosity at 100 degrees or the normal operating temperature is off a little bit. Uh, this report did not measure the acid number that was present in the oil, but it did measure the base number. And this is a very important number, uh, and it's usually the first thing that will go wrong with most modern oils. Because base number is the measurement of the oil's ability to neutralize these acids that were created over here by the water coming in. But there's only so much of that uh, additive in your oil, and it gets used up as it neutralizes the acid. For example, most of AMS oil's top oils start out up in the 12 range, uh, and now we're down into the 6.43. That's not bad. You still got about half of your 
acid control additive left, you're, you're good to go. If that number starts to get down, you know, like a two or less, uh, then you really not need to start looking at changing your oil or at least sweetening your oil as we call it, which is when you uh, add back just enough oil. Uh, like, for example, let's say you just change your oil filter um, and you add back a couple of quarts. That, those two quarts of new oil will sweeten the TBN number uh, enough to push it back up into the good range. Oxidation is that normal process that takes place inside of your engine when oil molecules get broken apart uh, and oxygen starts attaching to them and it basically creates rust inside of your engine. Uh, and then nitration is another process similar to the oxidation. And so click on that one for more information there. I'm not gonna go into that one. That's a pretty long discussion. That's an, a quick overview of a relatively healthy, there's only like I said, one issue here. Uh, and that was that the viscosity was off by a little bit. Now I wanna move over and look at a couple of other reports. Uh, and since we've already oriented you to the whole report format, I'm not gonna go through that again. But if you'll notice up here in the top, these reports have the number three highlighted in yellow uh, as the upper end of abnormal. If you had a report that was critical, it would be red flagged and they would be telling you, hey, stop operating this piece of equipment immediately and take corrective action because you're fixing to blow this thing up. This is a six liter. The other one was a six liter as well, but this one is running a different oil. This one's got Shell Rotella T6, full synthetic, and it's still a 15W40. Uh, but Bill was telling me earlier that he knows for sure that this truck is running Arch Oil oil additive, right? Yeah, it's the Arch Oil AR9100 oil additive. And so even though it looks like the potassium and the boron numbers are, and they are, they're kicking this flag, uh, that's not unexpected for a, a vehicle or an engine that's got Arch Oil in it. Uh, some of the additives that are in the Arch Oil formulation are pushing these numbers up. And so when the uh, sample was submitted, they did not probably tell the lab that you had arch oil in there. Uh, that may or may not cause the lab to change the uh, flagging, but it would be helpful for the lab to know that uh, because they have probably run tests on arch oil. They at least know what arch oil is made from, and so then they could go back and rerun these reports, and they'll do that as well. If you've ever got a report that Let's say you forgot to tell them about the filter or you forgot to tell them something about the oil. You can call the lab back or email them back and give them that additional information and they'll rerun that report uh, using the new information and doesn't cost you anything. But this truck's got some fuel dilution. So somehow he's got maybe an injector that's spraying wrong or he's got, because it's not a 6.4, so it's, it shouldn't be dumping it in from the emission side. Uh, but he's got a little bit of fuel in there. One of the things that happens in a six liter is the O-rings around the injectors themselves will leak. And uh, you can, that's primarily in a, in a, in a six liter, what, where the fuel dilution will come from is from an injector seal leaking. And I would recommend the first step I would take on this particular truck, and it's something we actually did, because this report was done way back in January, uh, was we resealed the injectors and then we retested after that and the fuel dilution went away. Yeah, so that's one of those cases where um, you didn't even know you had a problem until you pulled a fuel sample, or I mean an oil sample, and it came back and said, hey, uh, you got fuel in your oil. Uh, right, and if this continues, then it will destroy the viscosity right. of the of the oil and possibly smoke the bearings in the uh, in the in the engine. So it's exactly. it's very very crucial. This was a situ this was a case in point situation in this particular six liter truck that we were able to quickly and effectively fix the problem before it caused damage to the engine. So now moving over here to the third report. Again, this report is flagged abnormal three, and that's got several issues down here. Well, now this is my personal truck now. And I actually was, I was actually, and I was running a Hydrotex oil that, that uh, had been comped to me that I was testing and I pushed it. If you go down there and look at the miles, it's 15,650 right there. Right. So I, I really pushed this oil to the, the outer limits and I was running Arch Oil at the time, the AR9100. And this was the third of three reports that I had done uh, on this oil as I at 5,000 mile intervals. I did it at 5,000 miles and 10,000 miles and now at 15,000 miles and uh, it became very apparent it was time to change oil. Right. An oil analysis of this is just a snapshot of that moment. Okay, it's a photograph of the oil at that moment. You have to, because of scientific process like in Teeter here, we had to take, do the work to the truck, 
and then take another snapshot to make sure that this fuel dilution actually went away and that we solved the problem. This is just a snapshot of the oil of that moment in time at that mileage. What you would find if you started to do, and this is what I call building a profile for an engine or a component, is if you tell the lab the same component information each time, they will start adding all of your samples to the same printout. And that way you can start going back and comparing them. Um, and so that's really the, the way this whole system is designed, is that it's not just to take one snapshot, it's to take a look at your engine and the oil on a routine basis, uh, on a set schedule, like oil changes, but as an AMSOIL guy, you know, a lot of our products are designed for extended drain intervals. Well, the way that you protect yourself uh, from any possible damage is to continually do oil analysis pulls on a schedule uh, until you get a really good profile built for that engine to where it, you know exactly what's going on in there. And then you can back off on those samples a little bit. And then if you get an abnormal report, you know, hey, I got a problem here because I know that's not a healthy situation for that engine. The potassium issue is, again, being pulled from arch oil, uh, probably along with the boron. But now we're starting to see uh, Molly B, and we're starting to see magnesium and calcium. And so some of these additive metals and multi-source metals numbers are starting to get out of whack. And you could come back up here to the comments and read, okay, what's the lab telling you? It, what they're telling you up here is not always exactly what's going on in your engine. It's just helping you get oriented to where should I start looking. Uh, and then the oxidation number down here was uh, starting to get up as well. Uh, and so, what would what would oxidation mean? Oxidation is when you're uh, down back at the molecular level again. Uh, your oil is starting to fall apart, and oxygen is starting to attach to the molecules uh, when it shouldn't be. And so then it's basically, it's similar to a rust situation. What we did find out from this test at 15,000 miles on a 6.4 is that the viscosity was maintained and the base number was maintained. Yep. Okay. And this was with bypass filtration. I did not put a micron rating on there. I should have done that, but I didn't. And, and, but what, ha what kicked the oil out was the, the increase of contaminants uh, and or oxidation. And the only way you'll ever see this is to test it. Tom, I, I appreciate you extending your expertise and, and, and knowledge in terms, because you probably have forgotten more than I'll ever learn about this. On my website, I don't sell the uh, oil test, but you can get another one from Tom. And Tom can sell you the test kit for transmissions, differentials, and coolant, correct? Coolant, we actually got them for diesel fuel. Uh, that's an expensive test, really designed more for big storage capacities, but yeah, we've got them for all kinds of, and you can use an oil test for a transmission or differential. Okay. Uh, so you don't have to have a, a different report for that. Now, uh, that's, that's Tom Brown, Certified Lube Specialist, and, and what's your email again? Info at best-synthetic-oils.com, or you can just go to my website and click on the Contact Me link there, um, and I'll be happy to help you out. Uh, now, Bill, you said you're going to give away a, a report or a test kit with the purchase of an arch oil. Yeah. Uh, so then if you want to continue on, like we talked about, of building a profile for that component, then contact me for the other kits. Well, they're, they're going to go back to the exact same lab, so you're going to get very consistent reporting, and we can marry those reports up, like I talked about earlier, where you can start to build that profile. Uh, so this will work out very well for you. If you get your report back and you got a one, hey, you got a gold star. Everything's cool. Zero is actually the gold star. Oh, one. oh really? So that's that's the bronze, the silver star, the bronze star. <laughs> so if you got a three and, and you're running a lot of potassium and boron, that's because you're running Arch Oil AR9100. You're still cool. If you start getting some funky report like this with a bunch of stuff on it, email him. You can email me, but I don't know. Okay, I just don't know. This is the man, certified lube specialist. We can help you out. I appreciate Thank everything you, you do for us, Tom. Also, if you're watching my videos and you're not watching them on PowerStrokeHelp.com, you're really missing where the action is. You need to go to the website, PowerStrokeHelp.com, and check us out because there's a lot of information on there that could be very useful to you as a Power Stroke owner to keep your truck on the road as long as possible. Remember, if you press the Arch Oil button, all the proceeds from Arch Oil uh, go to help train a vet, the nonprofit organization that I run to help veterans ease their way back into civilian life. Thank you for all your support for making PowerStrokeHelp.com the number one stop for PowerStroke owners on the internet.